Okay, so Aaron's over there coding. We're just sort of relaxing a little bit until we have to go to the theater, which, good thing I checked time and location. Yes. <laughs> it's at Arena and not Demunt, which is, is fine. Because, <laughs> like, <laughs> the way we're going to get there is actually the way we'll get home, but we're making a stop off on the way home. Because <laughs> it's at 2.30. We're going to get down there about 2. Uh, we're going to watch the movie. And then we're going to get back on the metro, head north to Amstel, get back on the 37, but not come all the way home. We're just going to go off a critical plane and go have Tomatillo. <laughs> like, <laughs> that, that's how that goes. And I'm going to take the camera and I'm going to take the backpack just in case. Just because, you know, maybe we need to... something. But I opened up those, those Pringles. Just so you guys know, because they were in my bag last night after they... See, it says... Mexican style chili taco flavor and I absolutely need you Need you to know that these smell exactly like a combination of my taco meat and Taco Bell taco meat <laughs> Yes, they do that <laughs> smells freaking amazing. I uh, know It tastes like very. It tastes like Nally chili con carne with, with a bit of zip. Yeah, with a bit of zip in it. It's got. I, I do have a taste of bit of zip, which makes me think this probably tastes very similar to if you had. A, we haven't also eaten too terribly much because popcorn and soda and stuff. Yeah. But the thing is. I'm trying to think. This probably tastes more akin to you having the minced at Tomatillo with your Chipotle. Because you usually get a steak burrito, but you haven't had their Chipotle with their ground beef that like I have all the time in a yeah. while. This is definitively ground beef. Yeah. And this has that same Mexican chili zip that I would come from like the liquid that squeezes out of the Taco Bell meat. The oil that's along the bottom of the taco when you break it open. It's that, but there's something a little bit more to it. yesterday after I bought these. I was like, I'm not, gonna bother eating. I'm not gonna bother eating those. Those are all yours. I'm like, cool. They're not all mine. <laughs> Okie dokie. We're gonna have a little bit more. To, by the way, that's a theater. We just got out. So we got down here to Balmer and we had a quickie burger so that we weren't just piling on, you know, drinks and popcorn. We still had a regular popcorn. Probably could have gotten a smaller one. Neither of us were really that hungry. Yeah. Um, had a rolls, had a coffee, had a Coke, like or Dr. Pepper. What'd you have? Cherry Coke. Cherry Coke. So we had a Coke. And now we're gonna go to Tomatillo, and he he's got things to say. Yes. He has I some. So much to say. I was trying to put it off that you have much criticisms of it, fakely, but no, you don't. You were back there smiling up a storm. If you haven't seen the movie and don't want your spoilers, I'm going to let Aaron go full hog wild. So if you don't want any spoilers, see you tomorrow. Look at some... Uh, just giving you guys some time to realize, yeah, I don't really want to know the spoilers. So you can look at me trying to catch a fampy, fampy that I'm failing at doing so hardcore. I don't really care about it, but... Right. It's a lot of fun. I recommend seeing it. And it 
absolutely gives D and D vibes because there's so many places where you could almost hear the DM saying, "Yeah, that's not gonna work," or "Oh, great, that works perfectly." Roll a deck save. At least Aaron could. I could not. Yeah. Um. And it was just. It's every D and D game I've ever been in, ever played. Although I have no idea what class the main character was. I believe he was supposed to be a bard, but had no magical powers. He was just a minstrel because he was all about the charisma and the yeah. He was the over here a face bard. Yeah, and that's kind of what it was because bards are a bit overpowered. They really are. Rogue. I mean, he's definitely a rogue, but there's definitely yeah. He's just he's useless. It's wonderful. Um, the fighter, or barbarian, I think she's a fighter. She was a little too, she didn't ever like hulk out. She was definitely much more martial than ragey. Yeah. She, she was not so. Yeah. Um, and I mean, she had a giant two-handed ax on her back the whole fucking time. Yeah. Yeah, she was definitely a Rasta. Um. Yeah, I have absolutely no complaints about it. There is the the widely known thing about the druid turning into an owlbear, and I don't care. So what is the dealio with that? Like they can't. It's too high CR. No, it's just not on any of their approved lists. Because you can turn into at, at high level, you can turn into like a purple worm, I think. Which is CR 10 or something. It's, it's a ridiculously powerful beast. And it's higher CR than uh, owlbears are. I don't know why you can't. And I don't care that she sh wild shaped way more than she really could. Like, in But that's the thing is, D&D &D has to put itself in yeah. as a game to limit things. Yeah. But in an actual reality world, she's going to be doing what a changeling yeah. would do in Star Trek. Yeah, like... No, there's nothing really to spoil yeah. other than the fact of like... I, I was just letting people know that just in case they wanted to see it and you may have said something that... Yeah. Would have, um, I mean, it's a very it, predictable movie. It's an inconsequential movie almost. Like, it doesn't... Because it takes place in favor, it doesn't matter. It's not part well, of a larger universe. There's the stakes are big, but they're D and D big. And it certainly is much more D and D than the first movie, way a long time ago, oh. with like Jeremy Irons and the. Yeah, I don't think I ever saw that one. Yeah, you did. Okay, then I don't remember it, which tells you something. Yeah. Um, the one thing I will say, they did a ton of practical effects instead of special, instead of. CGI, which was so nice because it was understated. Um, the Arakoa or Arakokra costume. The wings were practical. Um, but there, it wasn't, everything wasn't flashy. It wasn't like, and here's a tiefling. See her giant horns and tail. She has a tail. She has horns. They're not the key defining thing. It was really awesome. <laughs> it was, it was really nice to see a movie that wasn't all about the CG. So yeah, I, I, I watched a, a, a fun romp of a movie. Um, <laughs> so that, that's what it was. Like I was laughing at a lot of the things, and they definitely were utilizing tropes that people understood from other movies. I'm sorry. At the end, the Albert was doing the Hulk smash on Loki. Yeah. And that's part of what made it D and D-ish. And then the fact that it was just like they in that world they wouldn't have had a word for it, and she probably would have been bad. But we all know if you've seen the movie, she would have meant that is a chonky dragon. That's not a word they would use. But she said did say pudgy, and that thing was grotesquely obese. <laughs> Your dragon is not a chonker. <laughs> <laughs> Your dragon is morbidly obese and needs to and please seek help. Did it eat the old lair? <laughs>
Yeah. It didn't, yeah. The, the movie didn't take itself seriously, which is excellent. But it also showed places like the Underdark mm -hmm. that are rarely ever talked about. I always would think of the Underdark as much more Minecraft caverns rather than borderline hell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Or Mount Doom. Yeah, and that's... But then again, that's just what I think about it, because anytime everybody's going down there, it's for the drow and the spider queen, and it's creepy and weird, And but in this case, it was the cause of the Underdark, but this was almost another realm. Yeah. Because those were like walking brains. <laughs> like, those were, those were aberrations yeah. beyond all belief. And that's another thing the movie did well. It was the Underdark. You go down there and, oh, everyone has night vision. Well, the cameras wouldn't, so it'd be dark, right? No, it was plenty well lit. I could see what was happening. Yeah. It wasn't like, you know, Tales of the Dragon. Or well, the whole scene was like, I have no lights on my room and I still can't see what's going on on this TV screen. <laughs> but. There's just something, Aaron, you, you just kept laughing. The thing with the dragon was definitively laughing, but there was something, something else. I, I think it was the graveyard scene. I think that was what yeah, just kept you giggling beyond all belief. And that was another one where I heard the voice of the DM really loud. Uh -huh. And then, but yeah, there's just... Honestly, like, when it came down to, like, the the comedy character, he wasn't actually supposed to be that funny Hugh, Hugh Laurie's character. Yeah. Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant, not Laurie. Hugh Grant, yeah. Hugh Laurie is house. Yeah. But yeah, it's... There was a part there. Just in the middle. I think it was a little after the Underdark. Or something, but it was just, you couldn't, he couldn't contain himself. It was so, like I had to like put my hand on him, like dude, please, stop laughing so much. I understand it's great, but you need to watch the movie. I can't pause this while you catch your breath. Yeah. I, God, I, don't, I don't remember what it was, but I, I remember that. I was, I was... Rocking. I think it might have been when the dragon showed up and she was talking about it being pudgy and it just kind of kept like trying to squeeze itself out. <laughs> that might have been it. <laughs> poor dragon. A poor dragon. Oh, okay, no. That dragon, not poor. That dragon has never missed a meal in its life. <laughs> <laughs> that dragon would be put on a weight program by an offensive line coach. 